Greetings, this is Dr. Derek Ong with the next video introducing to you the SPSS environment. Now, some of you who are new to SPSS eh, will find this very helpful because I will be teaching you how the SPSS environment looks like. What I'm going to be showing you is um, the SPSS data view, variable view, and we're going to see how variables can be set up as well as how we enter data in. So, when you start up your SPSS, make sure you find the IBM SPSS statistics icon, and when you launch it, you will basically see this as your screen. Um, SPSS data view is not any different from the Excel worksheet if you've worked with Excel before. It basically has your columns as well as your rows. So columns usually correspond to variables and rows usually correspond to cases. From the data view, you go to the variable view and this is where we will set up our variables. Now I know that most of you would be doing a um, quantitative uh, analysis using survey to collect your data. When you get your survey back, it would be advisable for you to do your coding on the variables, especially on the values, and then set up your variables here so that you can then enter your data once the variables are set. So now let me show you how to set up very simple variables. So the easiest variable for us to set up would be a gender variable. And it would be beneficial for you to enter all the types of variables in as numeric, except of course, if you've got a string variable, that's when you will have to then um, deal with uh, quotations and so on and so forth. All right. Width is just basically how many characters it can take. And decimals, well, since this is going to be a one and zero category, so you don't really have to play with decimals here. Now, let me just tell you a little bit difference between the name and label. Name is basically the name of the variable that will be used in the analysis and label would be the main label of that variable that will show in the results. So for example, in this particular variable, we have gender and we don't need a label because we know that gender is gender. But if you have probably something like this uh, to measure an item, then you might probably want to put down a longer name like um, period of timing to bake a cake. And so this um, label will show in the output. So let's take away that one. Now, Gender, of course, is a category, so make sure you set in values. Click on the three dots here. One, the label for male. Click add. Zero, we put for female. Now make sure you add all the categories before you press OK. Uh, we're not going to deal with missing values for now. Columns, alignment. The important one we got to deal with is this measure. Now, I'm sure you've heard, read, or watched my video on data measurement. So you know that gender is measured using a nominal variable, a nominal measurement. Uh, for interval and ratio data, they will be measured in one scale called scale. Now, next, let's put in age. Again, numeric. We don't have to deal with decimals. 
Now we are not going to set in any values because every single value that we put into age is going to be a category by itself but we must change this scale. So remember this column here for variables is very important. So let's set up another variable called highest degree. Now SPSS does not allow us to have empty spaces because it is a illegal character. So make sure if you want to represent um, empty spaces you put in an underscore highest education so numeric again you don't need any decimals if you want to put in label you can put in label and this of course will be an ordinal scale so we can set in one as no schooling add to as um, high school three as university sorry university degree for probably a postgraduate. Postgraduate. Now, then press OK. Now, notice why this one doesn't start with a zero, but the gender started with a zero. Uh, may I just pause here and advise that when you have any binary categories, like uh, two categories only, it is advisable that you label the values as 0 and 1. But if you have more than two, then please proceed with starting with 1, 2, 3, and 4, because it will help you later on if you want to do uh, analysis. So press OK here. And of course, this has a rank, so this becomes ordinal. So our variables are set up. If we go into the data view, just add in one age, probably, oops, just add in one age, probably 23, high use education one or four, zero here. 45, highest education, let's say 3, 1, 34, 3, 1, 27, 2. So when you get data like this, you might want to also toggle this little button here to see whether the values actually come out so yes the value comes out right so you can then set in any variables as you go along or oh, another note in case you have um, a question where you can choose more than one just make sure that every single choice then becomes a variable by itself let me just give you an example for example if you can choose um where have you heard about us so we say heard so the first one would be magazine second one probably would be heard radio so i'm just going to make with these two um if you set in the value say one as yes and zero as no so these are basically um, nominal variables so what you can do is if you have a lot of choices just copy and then paste so you don't have to retype everything all the way together right and then under the data view again one for indication that they've heard it through the magazines and zero if they've not heard it through the radio 
So let me just choose more than one. This probably they've heard it from the magazine and the radio. And then the rest there. Okay, so if you toggle, there you go. And that's all about data entry. Thank you for watching.